support the, the vote for the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. But in supporting the vote, I would like to make a few quotations. The first one from the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia, and uh, <clears throat> Section 9. If you have it, please come with me to the direct, uh, directive principles of state policy and the duties of a citizen. And I'll quote in part uh, to 112. The following directives shall be principles of state policy for the purposes of this part. Okay? And it gives the responsibility of the state. I quote at F that the state shall promote sustenance, development, public awareness of need to manage land, air, water, resources in a balanced and suitable manner for present future generations. I think this sits squarely with what Honorable Jamba was just talking about. I heard him correctly in that he did not discriminate anyone from owning land anywhere, but that there must be equity. And the directive principles of state policy does guide the legislature, the executive, and indeed the judiciary on how to be equitable. The second quote, before I get to my debate, I drew from this uh, report from the President of the Republic of Zambia during his address to the fourth session of the National Assembly of Zambia not so long ago. And this is what the President had to say on paragraph 27. We need to acknowledge that some of the environmental problems are man-made. Corporate institutions and individual citizens tend to ignore environmental impact of their commercial or individual capacities which they conduct adjacent to water resources. In this regard, I'm directing the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection to take the lead in ensuring that our water sources and land adjustment adjacent to these areas are not adulterated by corporate entities or individuals in the name of development. Mark that. Honorable ministers and your permanent secretaries, the above mentioned ministry ensure that Zambia Environmental Management Agency and Water Resources Management Authority realign themselves to effectively carry out their mandate and produce the required results today and not tomorrow. From today henceforth, I shall not see a house or indeed a factory being built adjacent to our water resources, depriving the majority of Zambians the usage of this resource. Now, this was the president, close quote, this was the president talking, and you are sitting right over here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, land is one of the three factors of production, and also land has, known, has been known to be um, a source of conflict from time immemorial. If you heard the, the Egyptians, the Persians fighting, it was because of land. Today we still have a situation where the chiefdom boundaries of 1958 is still not yet reconciled. All those things are sitting on land. Now, on land we have, or rather inside, in the belly of land, we have natural resources, water, as the president said, minerals, we have forests, we have game. And it is from this particular resource that even the, 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 which was now a doctrine, and I think under PF it's now become a policy statement, that the richer shall be richer, and the poorer shall be poorer, that even the little they have will be taken away from them. It is because of, of land and its usage. We all draw our riches, if we have, from land. No one will draw any amount of wealth in a vacuum, in the air. It will be from land. Dirty as it looks, the soil, it is from that resource that countries, nations are deemed rich or poor. Therefore, the question that one asks is, how come in the midst of plenty, the fools starve? In the midst of plenty, fools starve. It is management. Mr. Chairman, I do recall that um, there has been a controversy in the last few days about the Zambezi resources and the government's um, idea 
of overturning Zema um, decision not to allow mining activities to go on in the Zambezi, Lower Zambezi. I was fortunate that I sat on the committee that was dealing with this matter when Zambezi resources were pushing for a license to be given to them in order for them to, con to, to do some mining activities in the Lower Zambezi. A point of order is raised. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Today I'll be very brief on my point of order, Mr. Chairperson, because of time. Is the Honorable Member for Mazabuka Central, in order to divulge proceedings of a committee, which we all believe is not supposed to be in the public domain, we are aware that he's trying to protect some particular individual who has been accused by the people of Zambia of having a finger and is trying to pull out that finger on behalf of somebody else, is he in order to divulge the proceedings of a parliamentary committee for purposes other than a, a report written and published on the floor of this house? I thank you, Mr. Chairperson. I need your serious ruling. Well, the Honorable Member debating is just doing his... Uh, uh, introduction of his debate and he has not gone into any detail I'm following him I, I'm following so well and uh, so far he hasn't divulged anything that can even grant the chair to rule him out of order However, I want just to say the issue of uh, the, the issue of uh, Lower Zambezi should not come into this debate because we are looking at uh, something very specific, Minister of Lands. Uh, Mr. Nkombo therefore is not out of order and he may continue. <clears throat> I think we need a little bit of tutorials here, Mr. Speaker, because the report I'm referring to was tabled here. It, it is in public domain and therefore there's nothing that prohibits us from talking about the report. It was, I was a member of that committee it was not a secret. Order, the report was tabled there, and from the Mr. moment it was tabled, it became public Mr. information. I think I have brought him out of order, and uh, that is the main reason why I have said you are not out of order. Thank you, sir. I'm so just, just being continue. a brother's keeper so yeah, that yeah. the brother can lift himself up in the, to the procedures of, time, of this house. In the interest of time, Mr. Nkombo, just continue. Thank you. Mm. But you can give a point of order. I, I'll be gladly waiting if she wants. What I was saying is that the order, mineral Mr. resources... Chairman. There is a conflict here, Mr. Point of Chairman. Order. The mineral resources... Point of, order, as a a point of order is raised. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. As you know, I rarely ra rise on points of order. But the point of order I'm about to raise, Mr. Chairman, is extremely compelling. Mr. Chairman, just recently, this house had to actually run another workshop on uh, the decorum of this house. And for the years I've been member of parliament, if a speaker is talking, you are, it doesn't matter where you are in the house. If you are walking, you stop. Correct. If you are debating, you sit down. But if this thing seems to be getting worse and worse because of our colleagues on, the, on your left, they seem to think that even simple, simple observation of the rules of the decorum of this house should not be observed. And Mr. Chairman, I, is the Honorable Member of Parliament debating right now in order to remain standing when you are talking, in addition to continue answering you 
as you are trying to speak. I need a serious ruling on this because really, they, 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 this house is getting into disrepute. Well, I will, I will not take uh, much of my time on that point of order from Professor Lu. My ruling is that the member was not in order. I had given a length uh, guidance when Chavi raised the same issue. Honorable Chavi, <laughs> or Mr. Chavi. So, the, the, the Honorable member who is debating will take that into consideration. At Thank least, you, Mr. Uh, for now, we can uh, continue. Mr. Nkombo, continue. Thank you, sir. Just uh, for purposes of um, emphasizing my brotherly love and sisterly affection to the two who raised points of orders, you sit down when the speaker is on his feet. That's the rule. Okay? Honorable Mr. Nkombo, it will be very difficult for you to begin to to, 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 to to try and defend yourself when the speaker's road or the chair's road. You are now beginning to risk whether you finish your debate or not. I think let's be serious. I've ruled and let's move forward. I, 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 we need to conclude this vote. So, I, I, will not, I will not allow any point of order in the interest of time. And, uh, and we have to, to be serious with what we are doing. Mr. Nkombo, continue. Merci beaucoup, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I was taking Lower Zambezi as a case study in the Ministry of Lands. And I'm sure that my sister-in-law, Honorable Kapata, understands where I'm coming from. And there's no blame gaming here because we are all doing our job. And my job is about to be defined in the following manner. That the Zema, don't forget, I just read what the President said here. The Zema had disqualified the operationalization of that mine, that shaft, which was sunk many, many years ago in the 30s. All right? And we heard yesterday, at least I heard, from the former minister who said this was a cabinet decision to overturn the management of this to the other in order to diminish the returns of what tourism could provide for this country, which is much more sustainable than mining. Because you all know that mining is a wasting asset activity. I think that is what it is. All right? Now, Honorable Minister of Lands, you have a big job. You have a difficult task because you are managing 752 million square meters of land mass and water. Sitting at the Ministry of Lands there where you sit, there will be a lot of things that will go wrong along the way. And unfortunately, the buck stops at you. When the corruption that Honorable Jamba was speaking about manifests, the buck stops at you and your government. It is plain knowledge that we need to devolve the activities of land management. I came from the chiefs. I came to the president's speech where he said, if there's anyone who is trying to destabilize the natural resource that provides uh, sustainability of the environment, they must be stopped forthwith. It was President Lungu who said this in this report. So now, one wants to ask a question. Do you listen to your president or you do not? Because he said today and not tomorrow. Why is it that there's still a debate on the issue of lower Zambezi? Is it a case of do as I say and not as I do? Because it is this cabinet, Mr. Chairman, this same cabinet you see here, that overturned the decision of Zema. But there was a minister who announced... One minister announced, and yesterday he exonerated himself and said, well, look, it was a cabinet decision. And the misplaced point of order came to say there's an individual who's trying to hide there because the minister clarified that this individual that you're talking about 
during the tour of duty as a minister of lands, he never even heard the name of this individual who they are trying to accuse as having sold Lower Zambezi. Maybe we should tell Mr. Ichilema to sell PF, even if it doesn't belong to him. Since he's known now to be the one who can sell things that don't even belong to him. The fact of the matter is that we have an environmental Mr. problem. Mr. Combo, sir, I think I've guided that. Let's, let's move away from that issue. Of Zambezi resources. Let's move away from that issue and concentrate on the budget under the Minister of Lands. I said, continue. Land is a factor of production. And in there, there is a conflict between mining and it will affect Manapuz. If you understand the geography of this region, across the river there, Guabi Lodge, uh, there is Manapuz in Zimbabwe. And the Zimbabweans themselves have complained that if you are going to change the usage of this piece of land at Lower Zambezi to start mining activities, you are going to contaminate and pollute the Zambezi River. Therefore, they are going to suffer a loss. Now, they are not. this is basically interfering with uh, international relations. My advice to you, Honorable Kapata, my sister-in-law, if you have what it takes, just close that subject about... Close that subject about mining in Lower Zambezi because tourism is much more sustainable than mining. I'm now coming to the Forestry Act. I think the Forestry Act is your enemy, Honorable Minister. The Forestry Act, I think number four of 20, uh, 2015, does not do you a favor because it still has this colonial hegemon connotation and flavor. Why I'm saying that is that, isn't it a wonder why Zambians, your own Zambian people, Lundas, Luvales, Tongas, uh, Mambwes, Bembas, are excluded from the activities of forestry. Don't you sit in your office and think, what is it? It is the dictation of the act that has excluded indi indigenous people from getting the benefit of the endowment that God gave us. And this is why I opened by saying, in the midst of plenty, the full staffs. We have to make it deliberate as a people, to make sure that our first core of benefit is to that poor person in Shangombo, where the timber comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has to be made deliberate that the, the chiefs who have been fighting to get you to lift the ban on Mukula tree are allowed to, 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 to log that tree because it's going to bring the domestic revenue to those people who God deliberately, he wasn't a fool, to put Mukula tree where it is. It is to benefit those people and not the Chinese. What is so difficult? What is rocket science about just getting things right? The direct principles of state policy guides us that we must provide a sustainable environment for our own citizens to get the benefit of the natural endowment. That we, now, if that is controversial, Mr. Chairman, then I think that is true that now under PF, it is no longer a doctrine of the rich shall be richer and the poor, even that little that they have, will be taken away from them. Because our people are suffering. They have no resource. They have no way to earn money. Leave them. Try and find a way to redo the act. Bring it here, we change it, so that it can be more accommodating. The threshold of getting involved in terms of monetary terms, licensing, Honorable Minister, it's too expensive for an ordinary person to manage, to register, and conduct that activity in the forestry. And you know that. You need to work it out. We need to, to, to benefit our people. Why is it that now it's a Chinaman who's getting the full benefit? I know for a fact that the Chinese, and nothing to do against their nationality, they've got the money, so now they've come to use indigenous Zambians use them as a conduit to exploit the natural resources. The same goes with the, the tourism. Why is it that game, game ranching, game hunting, and all this trophy business is centered up, up, with just the rich? Is that your doctrine? You can break that uh, paradox. You can. Show some goodwill and put deliberate. It's called... Um, uh, Affirmative action. You do positive discrimination for the local people 
so that you can be remembered as a person, honorable minister, who changed things around, that as your officials are busy being corrupt, you, you are putting a policy framework that is going to be all-inclusive, that is going to draw the poorest guy closer to an economic activity. We want to see an export permit in the name of Mr. Mukelabai, in the name of uh, Mr. Banda. And not that Mr. Mukelabai or Mr. Banda should be a front for a Chinese man. We must get out of that. And anyone who's been offended by these few things that I've said, I think you must consign yourself somewhere else, not here, because we are here for people business. That's right. We are here for people business, not for self-aggrandizement. Finally, the directive by the president, those of you who have been named in Forest 27, do the right thing. Because we are going to do land expropriation without compensation. We'll take away your properties. When the time comes, we are going to do land expropriation without compensating you for the cement, the blocks, everything that you are putting in that forest. We are going to take it away. It's called compulsory acquisition. Order. Mark my words, we are coming for you. Order, order.